In the previous video, we discussed the definition and value of big data. But why has big data become so popular in the last two decades? Data has been around for a much longer time. In order to understand big data, it is important to place it into its historical contexts. In our next module, we will discuss a short history of big data. The idea of using data for strategic decision making is as old as time. The Library of Alexandria, founded in the 3rd century BCE, was a renowned learning center in ancient Egypt. While the concept of data, as we understand it today, did not exist during that time, the library aimed to collect and preserve a vast amount of knowledge from various sources. It served as a repository of information, where the ancient Egyptians tried to capture all existing data in the world. Although everything was on paper, the Library of Alexandria can be considered the world's first massive database. Similarly, the ancient Romans, renowned for their military prowess, recognized the value of data in planning and executing military operations. While not relying on advanced technologies, they employed statistical techniques and predictive models to gather and utilize information for strategic advantage. Although the use of data for strategic decision-making has been around for a long time, the use of the term, big data, is relatively new. The term, big data, became popular in the early 1990s, and the term's first use is credited to John R. Mashey, who worked at Silicon Graphics at the time. Another influential figure in the development of big data is Doug Laney, an analyst at Gartner. In 2001, he published a research report titled, 3D Data Management, Controlling Data Volume, Velocity, and Variety, which laid the foundation for the three Vs of big data, volume, velocity, and variety. These three characteristics captured the essence of the challenges the growing data landscape poses. We will discuss the key characteristics of big data and the multiple V model in the next module. The reason why big data has become so interesting in recent years has everything to do with the explosion of data volumes. In 2021, we reached a global volume of 79 zettabytes of data in the world. One zettabyte is equal to one sextillion bytes. To put the scale of a zettabyte into perspective, one zettabyte is equivalent to 1,000 exabytes. It would take 1 billion 1 terabyte hard drives to store one zettabyte of data. If you stream high-definition movies continuously, it would take several million years to consume one zettabyte of data. If you consider this, it is easy to see that data volumes have become incompressible large, and it is justified to talk about truly big data. So how did we get to this point? Understanding some of the historical developments and technological innovations that have brought us to where we are today is important. At a highly conceptual level, three development phases have led us to big data as we know it today. The first phase started in the 1970s, with the professionalization and growth of relational database management systems. This enabled us to collect and store massive quantities of data. The second stage started in the early 2000s, with the explosion of the internet, including all the web-based unstructured content that it creates on a daily basis. The last accelerator started in early 2010 when mobile phones became mainstream. Every swipe, click, or step is now collected and stored through mobile phones. As things stand today, it might be fair to say that artificial intelligence will likely be a fourth accelerator. But today, it is too soon to say. Let's dive into the first three stages a bit more in detail and explore the key technological inventions that made these stages possible. Data analysis, data analytics, and big data are all related to managing and processing large amounts of data. These concepts have their roots in the field of database management, which has been around for several decades. The first phase of big data was focused on managing and storing large amounts of data in relational database management systems. Database management became mainstream in the 1970s with the advent of the relational database model and the development of commercial database management systems. The introduction of the relational model by E. F. Codd in 1970 laid the foundation for modern database systems. 
It emphasized the organization of data into tables with relationships defined through keys. This phase emphasized the importance of data warehousing and database management techniques to ensure efficient data storage, extraction, and optimization. It was driven by the need to handle the growing volume of data generated by businesses and organizations and the potential value that could be derived from analyzing this data. This phase laid the groundwork for the development of more advanced data analytics tools and techniques that we see in use today. In the second phase of big data, which began in the early 2000s, the internet and the web became a major source of data. Companies like Yahoo, Amazon, and eBay started analyzing customer behavior by studying click rates, IP-specific location data, and search logs. This increased the amount of semi-structured and unstructured data that was being analyzed. Web traffic generated a lot of data that needed to be processed and analyzed. The focus shifted from analyzing data stored in databases to analyzing data that was being generated in real time from various sources. This required new technologies and tools to handle the increased volume, variety, and velocity of data. The third major phase of big data, up until this moment, is caused by the data generated by mobile phones and their sensors. Every device today is equipped with multiple sensors, which generate data on an ongoing basis. Every click, swipe, or tap generates new data. Because most mobile devices now also have GPS sensors, every step you take creates new data. Besides the obvious massive increase in data that these devices and sensors generate, there are other important implications. The data created by these devices provide the opportunity to analyze behavioral data. What time do people wake up? When are they in traffic? These questions can be answered by analyzing mobile data. Since the number of sensors and devices is only expected to grow further in the next years, so will the amount of data generated by these sensors. So these are the three important waves that have led us to where we are today. It is too soon to tell, but it is likely that artificial intelligence will cause the fourth wave of massive data increase.